two speech? Is it number two or three? Number two. And the title is how you can solve any problem. How would you like to be able to solve any problem you face? The good news is you already have the tools necessary to solve your problems. What do you need? We need brains. We need time. We need money. Sometimes we need cooperation from other people to be able to solve our problems. The first thing we have to do is to identify what is the problem and ask ourselves why. What is the cause of the problem? And then we might make a list. We might uh, make a note of some ways we can change things or correct the situation. And we have to ask ourselves who is responsible for this problem. If I come home and the, the sink is piled high with dirty dishes, I, I, I tell my kids this is not fair. I've been working all day and the least you can do is rinse your dish and put it in the dishwasher. So this is a situation where I have to get cooperation from other people to, to solve this problem. Okay, so we need to pray about our problems. When we realize we have a problem, that's really the first thing we should do, pray about it. And I'm gonna talk more on this later. Okay, the second thing we have to do, we have to care enough to do something about it. If we wanna just complain about this problem, we can complain until the cows come home, as they say, um, and nothing is going to change. So we have to actually do something. And um, there's a few verses I wanted to share with you, and they're actually all in the book of James. And the first one is James 1.22. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like a man who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. So one thing about this verse, I'm going to apply it not so much spiritually right now, but um, to physical problems that we have. If, for instance, I want to lose weight or build muscle or do something about my physique, um, it would help to look in the mirror. I mean, why do you think weight clubs have mirrors all the way around? <laughs> and another thing, when people exercise, they tend to wear kind of skimpy exercise clothes so that they can actually see. So you're there at the club working out and you can see your muscles or your lack of muscles. You can see, <laughs> you know, if, what you need to do to improve and you can also see maybe what progress you've made. So that sort of spurs you on to make even more progress. Okay, so let's see, where was I? So we look in the mirror and we take action. When we make progress, we want to celebrate, we want to praise God and, and celebrate the progress that we made. Now we may have multiple problems, so we have to prioritize. Okay, a few of my problems, I, I'd say the three top ones on my mind are managing money, my weight, and being organized. But because I would have to say managing money is at the top of my list. Once I feel I have my money situation under control and I'm out of debt, then I will feel like I've really accomplished something and I can tackle the next problem, but that's my number one, so that's my priority right now. Now, I can't solve all of these problems at once, so one thing that I do is I refuse to be distracted or worried by things that I can't do anything about. So, um, you know, I, I just deal with what I have to deal with that day, and, you know, I just leave the rest up to God and just focus on the moment and what I have to do. So um, I want to share a story. I don't think Larry will mind me sharing this, but in one of my brainstorm moments, I told Larry that we should write books and try to make some money, you know. 
you know that idea that if you were able to get a dollar from a million people, you'd have a million dollars. So <laughs> I, uh, I, I thought, well, maybe we can write a book, a little book, on um, how to manage your weight or how. And I said, Larry, you should write a book on how you quit smoking. And um, Larry said, well, it would be a really short book. <laughs> it was God. And that brings me to the last part of my speech where I want to focus more on you know, what God does and his role in helping us solve these problems. So also in the book of James, um, it says, confess in James 5.16, oh, I'm out of time. In James 5.16, confess your sins or faults to one another and pray for each other. Okay, that's, and ask, okay, James 1.5, and I'm going to leave you with this. If any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to him. But when he asks, he must believe and not doubt. So, you know, there's lots of sources for wisdom on how to solve our problems, but God is really the first and foremost source of wisdom. And with that, we have confidence that we can deal with any problems we face.